So my goal was to figure out if I had a thousand dollars, what pieces of Sitka gear would I spend it on? You'll see I'm wearing leather gloves, obviously. That's not Sitka. The whole point is, what are the key pieces of gear that you should purchase if you are on a budget? I did a couple laps just up and down to get my heart rate up. A little bit sweaty, plenty warm. Now we're gonna sit for a bit. One thing I've definitely learned is that insular, being warm isn't always about insulation. Things like a butt pad will keep you a lot warmer, especially if it's wet out or snowy. Rather than putting your butt straight on the snow, that's just gonna suck heat right out of you. Just bring a butt pad. They're cheap, they're lightweight. Makes a huge difference though. Another thing a lot of people do is take off their backpack and vinyl harness. When they're in a cold sit, that is a mistake because both of those things will keep you warmer as well. So I'll sit here with my pack on for a good while and see if I can stay warm. You can't see a thing. This was dumb. I've been sitting here for about an hour. Got up once to move around, but mostly been trying to be still, bring my core temperature down. Uh, not at all cold yet, but I wouldn't say I'm layered perfectly for this weather. I gotta head back to the office and get back to work, so I'm gonna do the rest of this video in the studio. I'll cover everything that I'm wearing, so keep watching. So like I said, I wanna talk about purchasing decisions. More specifically, what I would buy if I had $1,000 to spend on Sitka gear. Now I wanna try and build this up with the intent of creating an all season kit for the Western Big Game Hunter, but I will still separate it out into two lists, one for the arid climates and one for the more humid climates. I'll start off on a tangent and say the most important purchasing decision you're gonna make is your boots. If you haven't gotten a good pair of boots yet, start there. The second most important purchasing decision you will make, in my opinion, is what pants you wear. So what is Sitka's best option for an all-around hunting pant? I would definitely say it is the mountain pant. Uh, you, if you read reviews, everyone kind of agrees that the mountain pant is a solid middle of the road, works for your early season hunts. If you layer properly, it works for your late season hunts as well. The fit is slim, but not tight. There's plenty of length in the legs. It's got removable knee pads, which are a little big, but also provide plenty of coverage. It's got nice quiet pockets, low profile belt loops. Overall, it's just a nicely laid out pant. It's gonna cut the wind, it's gonna keep you a little bit warm, but it's also gonna breathe really well. So that's important on those hot days, especially when you wake up, it's cold, but midday it's gonna get into the 80s. You're gonna want something like this on your legs. Now the mountain pant earns every compliment that it gets, but my personal choice would probably be the Timberland pant. It's gonna work a little better for those late season hunts because it's got reinforced and more waterproof knees and butt. Both pants work for an early September elk hunt. Both pants will work for a late November mule deer hunt. So it's really dealer's choice. But since this is a budget video, we're gonna go with a $50 cheaper mountain pant. Now we'll move on to the upper body and we'll start with the base layer. I ended up going with the Sitka Midweight Crew. And I'll start this section out with a bit of a controversial opinion here. I would say if you're hunting in that hot 75 and up uh, temp weather, you don't need to spend a hundred bucks on a base layer. If you can afford it, that's great. If it's me, a lot of times I find myself just hunting in a t-shirt in those conditions. Obviously there's downsides to that, but if you're on a budget, I would definitely go with the Midweight because if you're on a September elk hunt, it's the afternoon, sun's going down, you were hot all day, but the temps are certainly dropping. You were wearing a t-shirt, take that t-shirt off, put this on right before your stock, the chances that you're gonna sit for an hour plus could be pretty high. So having that little bit of insulation that this provides will be very beneficial. And then of course, for your late season hunts, this is gonna be a lot warmer to start your layering system. What this is, is it's uh, it feels like a thinner grid fleece. So it's got some channels here that's actually gonna trap a little bit of air next to your skin and give you that insulation that a grid fleece would just on a lower level. It'll breathe 
it's fairly warm, and it's lightweight. Honestly, I think this is a piece that you're gonna find yourself taking on every hunt that you go on. That being said, if you do sweat a lot, I might take back my previous statement and say go with the core lightweight because it is a much thinner layer and it will dry quicker. Moving on to the mid layers. Now mid layers are something that I think can be overlooked quite easily, but in reality, I find myself asking a lot of my mid layers. On those warmer hunts, I'm trying to use it as an outer layer, something I can hike in, retain a little bit of heat, but also sit and glass in for a little bit without getting cold. On the late season hunts, you want something that dries super quickly. You want something that's gonna provide you good insulation, but also continue to breathe well if you're wearing it underneath something like a rain shell and still trying to hike. There are actually five choices that I would recommend in this category from Sitka. So I'll go through all of them and talk about why I would choose each one. Now the first option and the one that I chose for the list of this breakdown is the Sitka Heavyweight Hoodie. It's because it's their cheapest mid layer, but also a great product. It's a typical grid fleece. It's not too thick. It doesn't restrict your movement at all. Dries quickly, keeps you warm. Uh, it's really just a good middle of the road mid layer. One thing I will note is I have noticed some pilling pretty quickly on the fabric, but that seems to be pretty common for most grid fleece products. Now the next mid layer that I'll talk about is the Sitka Ambient Line. They have a hoodie and a jacket. What I have here is the hoodie. And I will say, at first, I was not impressed. When I picked it up, uh, the material seemed thin, it seemed cheap. The fit wasn't great for me. I just wasn't quite sold. It didn't feel like an almost $300 shirt. But after some testing, I have really come to love this piece of gear. The hoodie and the jacket are very similar. Uh, the hoodie is five ounces heavier, 50% warmer, and another $30. So make your choice there, depending on who you are and where you plan on hunting. But this is a truly incredible mid layer. It performs very well. It breathes like crazy when you're hiking. And when you stop, it holds that heat in very well, especially if you have a outer shell over top of it, you're gonna come to love this piece of gear, I think. That being said, it is not cheap. So for the humid list, we're gonna go with the heavyweight hoodie. For the arid list, we're gonna go with the ambient jacket actually. Now the fourth and fifth option are the uh, Kelvin Active hoodie and jacket. Those are both discontinued items. They were the predecessors to the Ambient line. If you can find those in your size and the pattern that you want, those are both great options. They perform very well and you're gonna find them for a great deal. All right, now so far we've got a list for those early season hunts. But what happens when the temperature starts to drop and you see a little bit of precipitation in the forecast. You really have to talk about a soft shell. Now soft shells are a tough one. You've got guys like me that don't sweat too much and they love them. And then you've got guys that sweat a lot and they find them useless. They're also heavy and not very packable. So those who are doing backpack hunts are not gonna want them either unless it's cold enough to wear it the whole time. When I was building this list, I wanted something that would be breathable enough to hike in, but also protect you from light precipitation. Something like a rain shell is gonna to sweat too much, and something like the Kelvin Aerolite is gonna be vulnerable in thick brush or a surprise rainstorm. I think if you are hunting in areas where precipitation is likely, the Jetstream jacket will become a staple item. The material is quiet enough for bow hunters, and I've found that it breathes well enough for extended moments of exertion without getting too sweaty. It also cuts wind and holds heat, making it a great outer layer when stationary. The fit is a little short in regular sizes, so I ended up going with the large tall for myself. I'm six foot one. And I found it to be perfect. There's plenty of room in the arms, but there's also enough space in the chest to layer something like the Kelvin Aerolite underneath and allow it to loft well and not be too bunched. As much as I love this jacket, if you are doing a backpack hunt or you sweat like crazy, I might recommend skipping this purchase and going for something like the dew point jacket, something that's gonna be a rain shell It'll protect you more in heavy precipitation. And when you're hiking, you probably just won't wear an outer shell. I'll also add a little personal experience and say that I didn't wear a soft shell on most of the hunts that I've been on the last couple years. But when I do need it, it's an irreplaceable piece of gear. So it's kind of specific on when you would use it, but it is very important. If you're hunting in a more 
arid climate, you can probably skip that purchase, but if you're hunting somewhere where precipitation is likely, I would strongly consider the Jetstream. If you're hunting out west later than September, you need an insulation layer. Sitka currently offers two packable insulation layers. They've got the Kelvin Light Down and the Kelvin Aerolite. If you could only pick one, I'd recommend going with the Aerolite. It's $50 cheaper, and when paired with something like the Jetstream jacket, it will keep you very warm. But it's also synthetic, it'll breathe a little better than the Down, and you'll be able to handle light exertion without sweating too much. Now keep in mind that this jacket is actually fairly thin. You won't get the same kind of insulation that you will out of a down coat, but the warmth to weight ratio on this synthetic is really incredible. I've loved this jacket. I like the way it fits. I like the way it keeps me warm and I like the way that it breathes just enough to move around in it. Now you might be asking why I would choose the Kelvin Aerolite over the Kelvin Light Down. The reason is I didn't really fall in love with this jacket because of the noise. It's got kind of a crinkly sound to it. It's got a thicker outer fabric, which is going to be more durable. But honestly, as I wore it, as I tested it, the noise just kind of killed it for me. That being said, it is a very warm coat. It fits you fairly tightly. Um, it's going to perform great in the arid climates, especially. Whereas in a humid climate, you might want to go with a synthetic just because it'll hold heat better when wet and it will dry a little bit quicker. Now for the sweaty guys who opted out of the Jetstream jacket, I'd recommend going with the Kelvin Light Down. The reason is, neither of these coats are going to be breathable enough for you to hike in. And the Kelvin Light Down has a better warmth to weight ratio. If you're hunting in arid climates, I would also recommend going with the Kelvin Light Down. So we've got pants, base layer, mid layer, insulation, and an outer layer. The one thing we haven't talked about is rain gear. That's because rain gear is going to run you upwards of $650. If you want a budget option, you cannot beat something like this. This is a $25 poncho. I take it on trips from Arizona to Alaska. If you got heavy precipitation coming, this over a soft shell like the Jetstream is a great option. This over uh, actual rain gear shell will keep you real dry for those long backpacking trips when your gear isn't gonna dry uh, day to day. And then something like an Arizona hunt where there could be a surprise rainstorm, this is a lot lighter weight and a lot more packable than something like the Jetstream. It looks a little goofy, but I'm telling you, it really does work. It'll keep the wind off of you when glassing, it'll keep you and your gear dry, and it's small, affordable, and lightweight. You really can't beat it. The link to this is gonna be in the description. So, we've got the humid kit coming out at 1181 and the arid kit coming out at 991. The whole point of this video though is to be at that thousand dollar range. So, if there was one item that I had to cut off of the humid kit list, it would probably be the heavyweight hoodie. The reason for that is you can likely find a good substitute um, just a normal fleece at your thrift store, something used, and wear that until you can afford to bump up to a truly special mid-layer such as the Ambient. And please keep in mind this list is my best suggestion. Everyone has a different body type, everyone's hunting in different conditions. If you have questions, give us a call, leave a comment below, we'll be able to help you out here at Gearful. And if you call us on the phone, we'll be able to walk you through your own customized list and be able to give you an incredible deal on a custom order. Don't be afraid to drop a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.